I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. One of the most confusing areas for women looking for management of their hot flats and night sweats is the whole confusion around menopausal hormone therapy. And to help us go through this and try and demuddle it, if that's a word, we've got Dr. Peter Schnauz. Welcome, Peter. Good, good morning. You're going to be my demuddler, if you will, okay? You're going to take this whole area. Um, Let's start first with introducing you to our audience. You are an Associate Chairman and Residency Program Director in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the Reading Hospital, as well as the Sidney Kimmel Medical College at Thomas and Jefferson University in Philadelphia. Right. So for women who have seen this, this since 2002, women stopped their hormones in mm -hmm. droves, and now there's a little bit of the pendulum coming back, women are really confused. Right. And the bottom three things I know that my mm -hmm. patients ask me is, is it safe? Is it effective? Mm -hmm. And what should I do? So, right. so if you can help us go through those <coughs> three areas, I guess the first thing is, is, is it safe? Yeah. I think the first thing we have to, to recognize, and you pointed out since 2002, so let's think for a minute before that. Many, many women were using hormonal therapy for all kinds of indications, hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, pain with sex, um, bone loss, and they were using it effectively and safely. And we have very good studies showing that hormonal therapy works well for those FDA approved indications. The challenge comes in is that what you alluded to is these new studies that came out in 2002. But I think what a lot of women don't realize is that those studies were designed for a totally different they were looking for, are there additional indications? Can hormones prevent diseases like having a heart attack? And they studied it in a very different, an older population of women. And so the results were extremely different. But the way that the results were released to us and the public caused a lot of confusion and almost fear in, in a sense. I'd say fear, not yeah. almost fear. fear. But since that time, we've had the ability to go back Right. and look at the population that you and I are seeing, yep. our consumer and our patient who's listening to this video, the 40, late 40, 50s, <coughs> yep. who's having terrible hot sweats, night flashes, and what about safety for them? Right, so as we have now gone back to look and reanalyze all the older data we had, the newer data, but break it up into age and all different kinds of ways we can sub-analyze it, we've learned quite a bit. And I think the most important thing is what we refer to as the timing hypothesis, which says that women who are younger, closer to the time of menopause, the safety profile is very different from in an older woman who's further from the time of menopause. And really in that younger population, the risks are, are very minimal. So when we talk about individualizing hormone therapy, and I, I think for a woman listening to this, that message that you are an individual mm -hmm. and therefore what you might offer that woman as an individual right. may not be the same as her neighbor next door. Right. And why is that? <coughs> yeah, and, and the buzzword I like to use with patients is it's not a one size fits all. Definitely. I think some patients, maybe their doctor told them, well, it's not right for you, but that doesn't mean it's not right for her. Right. And so based on, again, age, time since menopause, but now we have a whole different um, array of options of, again, approved medications that are lower in dose, which again, decrease the risk, um, different routes of administration. So we have patches, we have gels, we have suppositories. And the way that those are absorbed into the body allows a very different breakdown by the body and, and a much um, different risk profile. So. Again, as a physician, <coughs> we're able to look at the individual patient, her unique needs, what are her symptoms, and then what are her risks, and how can we best choose the right medication, dose, route, and duration of treatment. So I guess the message then that I'm hearing you say, and, and for our women out there who are listening to this, is that you've got to take time to explore this with your physician right. and not necessarily have a preconceived notion that no is no. And I think the other thing that's important is finding a physician who truly knows this area, ideally a North American menopause certified menopause practitioner, an NR, NRMCP. There you go. Um, and th they can actually find that on, a, on the NAMS website, the menopause.org website. 
and plug in their area where they live and pull up a list of physicians that have the certification. I think the important message that I'm hearing is, is that we have opinion that was formed in the early 2000s and, and once those opinions are formed it's very difficult to sort of move them, particularly with right. the safety issue. Yep. But medicine evolves, information evolves, and that's why we're talking about this. Exactly. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you.